What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2022 Acura MDX. Huge thanks to Acura for providing me here with the all new next generation MDX to review for you guys today. So about the new MDX, well, it is a striking looking thing. You know, it has Acura's new design language, which looks fantastic. And especially here in the A-spec version, like this one is, it's a little bit sportier looking as well with darker accents and stuff. But man, I mean, I love the Acura styling language and here on the MDX, I mean, it's a really bold and just attractive look though. I mean, the whole vehicle is actually larger. So that also helps with that bolder look. It's actually about an inch wider. The track is 1.4 inches wider. They also made it longer so it's 2.2 inches longer overall on a 2.8 inch longer wheelbase but the most drastic change you'll really see is here for the dash to axle ratio which is actually stretched out by 4.3 inches so you have a much longer nose here on the new mdx than you had on the uh, past version and uh, so i mean it just really gives this a very beautiful look as far as the styling goes up front there you also have those jewel eye led headlights which i really love the way those always look on these acuras and that bold grill with the like kind of star constellation thing with it uh, the way it's set up there it looks really really attractive coming down to the sides here on the a spec you also see you have some darker 20 inch wheels on the base mdx you'll get 19s uh, but 20s are offered here on these higher trims and look great i also like the little a spec badge you have here on the fender and again like the black mirror caps and stuff like that also look really nice here especially up against this red paint which really uh, pops and looks awesome and then also coming down to the sides here it's a really nice side profile here to the mdx it's very graceful and sloped but again this uh, front nose really you know juts out a lot more and so it gives it a very interesting profile there and i think it looks great going out to the back it's nice and smoothed out there i like those very slender and uh, very attractive led taillights there in the back it's pretty simple but i think it looks really nice i also like how you kind of see towards the middle of the hatch there kind of comes to a little bit of a point very mild still very rounded but looks very very nice and some nice exhaust finishers there in the lower part of the rear bumper and overall i think they just knocked it out of the park with the styling on the M mbx here it really is striking and uh, stands out from the pack all right, so let's start up and go for a drive. The 2022 Acura MDX here has this brand new Acura key, the next gen key. It's a really small key and it has a nice weight to it though still, but just such a sweet key here. On the back, he's got a couple of buttons and uh, I love this key. This is absolutely the right direction. This is like almost half the size of the old Acura key. It is so cool looking and so nice. So easy to fit in your pocket. 100% my favorite key in the industry right now. I love this new key. But of course it is keyless access, keyless entry and push button start here in the MDX. So you just uh, leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button. And it starts right up. And if you're curious to hear about the interior in the all new MDX, my wife and I actually just did a full in-depth interior review on this interior. So I will link that above. You can go watch that if you want to hear all our thoughts on this interior. But overall, it is a very nice place to be. It is much, much nicer than the old MDX interior for sure. And is very competitive with a lot of the other stuff out there these days. All right, so setting off here in the 2022 MDX. So the first thing that I'm noticing, well, I guess the first thing I can talk about here is visibility, um, which is pretty good in this MDX. So you have a pretty thin A-pillar here, although you do have this little blind spot warning thing, which is in the corner here by the mirror. Not a great setup there because it does make this a little bit thicker than it needs to be. Uh, but you're sitting up high enough, it's not too bad to see around. And, uh, you know, but otherwise, uh, you know, it is actually still pretty easy to drive. So you would think, you know, with the much longer hood now and the vehicle being wider and longer and stuff that it would feel a lot bigger than the old MDX and it's been a couple of years since I've driven the old MDX but from my memory this isn't any worse as far as you know maneuverability and stuff like that uh, I mean the hood still drops down very nicely so it's not like you're you know looking out over a big long hood or anything like that very easy to still drive and of course you do have backup cameras and stuff and if you go for the advanced trim you get a 360 camera and that gives you some extra visibility as well and then also view out of the back is pretty good in typical SUV fashion although you know with that third row up you will have those headrests blocking your view a little bit but otherwise still very easy to see out of the back there another thing that I really love about the MDX is it's light but direct steering it is like honestly the perfect steering setup in my opinion for something like this because you know most people buying through a crossovers they don't want heavy steering um, but some go a little too light and they don't feel you know very engaging or sporty or like you're really feeling anything this you feel a good amount of uh, stuff through the wheel here you know all the vibrations and stuff 
um, but it still is really quick and direct and it gives it a very quick and eager type of a uh, turn in feeling because it's just nice and light and it does uh, stiffen up in the sport mode uh, which we'll test out here in a minute but um, in the normal mode here it just feels really great another thing that's interesting and a distinct difference from a lot of other through row crossovers in this segment is the brake pedal so the brake pedal has a lot of travel to it that has pros and cons the nice thing about the long travel is that it's very easy to be smooth in the MDX here. you don't have to feather the brake pedal and be delicate you know you can be pretty rough with the brakes and still come to smooth stops uh, the problem with that is it's not super responsive feeling so it doesn't feel like it wants to immediately jump on the brakes the second you touch them uh, so that's just gonna come down to personal preference I don't mind it I think it's something that's very easy to get used to you just know hey I need to push on this brake a little bit more in order to get it to do what I want it to do I think you can adapt to that very quickly and it's no issue so I personally have no problem with that throttle response is also nice and sharp here in the MDX so it's very responsive because it's paired up with this 10-speed automatic transmission which is always ready to give you a downshift and always ready to go but then you know we have a naturally aspirated engine so there's no waiting around for turbos or anything it all feels very sharp and direct and just from the first mile of driving the MDX here it will feel like a driver's car to you it really you know the fact they're going for that performance edge here with the MDX I think really comes through and uh, you know it just feels very engaging just even at low speeds it's also pretty quiet and refined now we have the engine going a little bit here it is a you know larger v6 so it might make a little more noise than some of the smaller four-cylinder engines from some of the other luxury brands but but it you know it so soaks up the bumps pretty well here and uh, you know feels pretty luxurious but we'll talk more about that here once we're out at some higher speeds but I'm gonna go ahead and put it up into the sport driving mode and uh, let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does here we go Now the MDX gets up and moves here pretty nicely. It's not gonna, you know, take your breath away or anything, but it is strong performance. So it runs this naturally aspirated three and a half liter V6 engine. It does 290 horsepower and 267 pound feet of torque. And uh, zero to 60 times should be around the uh, low six second range for this vehicle. Uh, it's basically the same engine as the old MDX, so it should be pretty similar. Although this is about two to 300 pounds heavier than the old MDX. So that that's why it might be a tiny bit slower in a straight line than the old MDX is but um, anyway it's plenty of good performance and it is you know a old-school v6 though where it likes to make its power in the higher rpm so you can't be scared of floor in this vehicle it's not going to be like some of the more modern uh, setups that have a ton of torque down low with our turbochargers and stuff no turbo here to do that for you so it's just a matter of putting your foot to the floor and letting it sing but it's a lot of fun with the way that's set up and so I do really like that I think it's it's uh, very cool and again speaks to the more performance oriented attitude here you get with the uh, MDX so I really like that a lot um, and with that also I didn't even have the transmission in its sport mode that was just in the normal drive um, so we'll go ahead and put it up into the uh, sport transmission mode here I'm gonna try and do some manual shifting here you just pull the paddles for that to put it into that manual mode uh, but it still kind of has a mind of its own and I've noticed this with other Hondas and stuff in the past but anyway uh, it wants to start in second so we'll go second okay so fairly responsive it still has a little bit of a mind of its own we'll go ahead and uh, pop it out of that manual mode here just leave it in the sport mode though so it can do its own thing but anyway we're kind of some corners here and let's see how the MDX handles them so even though we have the sports steering here, it still is pretty light and really allows the thing to dive into corners well. Now the roads are a little bit damp. This is still winter, so I can't really go full-blown attack mode here. But what I can say is that this feels really, really good. And there are so many factors playing into why this feels as good as it does. But just from a feeling standpoint, I mean, yeah, this, <laughs> yeah, I can tell how it wants to rotate the back end a little bit too. So one of the things that I love about the MDX, and it's something that only the MDX has, is a true torque vectoring all-wheel drive system that can actually overdrive uh, those rear wheels and put up to 70% of the torque to the back there to really help rotate you through corners. And that is phenomenal. Um, and so, yeah, even though it is a little bit heavier here, I'm not really noticing the extra weight. I think the lighter steering really helps this to still feel very agile. And they also did so many changes to 
this platform to really make it completely different. So this is an entirely new light truck platform that's exclusive to the MDX right now. It will eventually work its way over to uh, the next generation Pilot and stuff like that. But for right now, only in the MDX. It makes this the stiffest SUV that Acura has ever done. I mean, the rigidity, all that stuff is all way up and, uh, you know, really makes this thing feel solid. But <laughs> I was like, just going around that corner and I could feel it. It really feels so dynamic with how it, it's ready to oversteer on you if you want to, you know, actually play around with it. Again, it's all wheel drive. It's very secure. But in the sport mode here, really does handle very, very nicely. And, um, you know, I think also it has better stability now than the old MDX. And so that kind of is a two-part thing as well, because I think that the old MDX felt maybe even a tiny bit more lively. This has that, you know, longer wheelbase by a couple of inches, which is a big stretch, honestly. So I think that gives it more stability. And so I think that it still does turn in very, very quickly and handles super, super well. And uh, I think that this new MDX continues to retain the crown, in my opinion, of the best handling three-row crossover, at least the best handling luxury three-row crossover, you know, in this price range. You know, maybe if you go up to the M versions of the X7 and AMG versions of the GLS, maybe. I haven't tested those, so I can't say for sure. But what I will say is that, you know, in the normal, you know, sub $100,000 three-row crossover segment, um, hands down, this feels like it's the best handling. Another acceleration. This time I had the transmission in sport mode. And it still is just super responsive though, no matter which mode you're in. You don't really even need to be in sport mode to get great responses out of this transmission because it still is very, very strong. And uh, oh man, yeah, I love driving this thing. It's, it's so insane the world we live in now that me as an enthusiast, I can enjoy driving a huge three row crossover and have it feel like I'm in a sports sedan. Like it honestly feels like I'm driving a sports sedan with how good this thing is handling. Um, it's much better than a lot of the others out there. Like I just reviewed the GV80 from Genesis and uh, there's no comparison. This thing will run circles around a GV80 on a, on a back road. Not like any three row crossover buyers usually care about that. But again, Acura is going for that performance angle here with the uh, MD and so, you know, if that resonates with you, then you are going to love the way this thing drives. I mean, and then you get that great soundtrack to listen to at the same time. It's really a wonderful setup. Um, but anyway, uh, several other things. I'm doing a disservice if I don't mention all the other enormous changes they made to the suspension. So, we have a brand new double wishbone front suspension setup. First time the MDX has ever had double wishbones in the front there. Um, so that gives it a much better, uh, you know, handling here in the front end and just makes this feel so stout. They also completely redesigned the multi-link rear suspension, so that is completely different than what it was before. I mean, so heavy, heavy change. I mean, this is completely, it's not like there's anything, this is nothing like the old MDX in any way whatsoever, aside from the true torque vectoring all-wheel drive, which actually is also uh, this new generation version of it, so even that's been improved. Uh, but I mean, everything about this is so, so impressive that yes, it gains some weight. I don't feel the extra weight, I mean, you know, I think that it still feels fantastic. I have no complaints whatsoever with the handling. These tires, we just have normal all season Bridgestone tires, by the way. They're doing a fantastic job of gripping. I have no worries about any kind of, you know, front end grip, back end grip, or anything. It just is phenomenal. And oh man, I'm just having a blast. We've caught up to some traffic here. Huh. But yeah, this thing is amazing around corners, honestly. And if this is just, again, the regular MDX, the bones that they'll build on for the Type S version coming, which is actually a full-blown performance version, which does have the turbocharged V6 and stuff, I can only imagine how good that is going to drive. And I cannot wait for that to arrive here in a few months. But in the meantime, this regular MDX is, yes, hands down the handling king, in my opinion, in the three-row crossover segment. It is just fantastic. And it's also worth noting, one other interesting change here with the MDX is that there is no adaptive damper setup. Even in the advanced trim, usually, you know, like the RDX and the TLX, you can get adaptive dampers in that advanced trim, and they work wonders. I was really blown away by just how much they changed the vehicle with the TLX that I reviewed last year. Uh, but the MDX, they said that they don't have adaptive dampers. They say that they've made enough improvements to the suspension uh, to make it still super comfortable and still handle super well. They just decided not to go with adaptive dampers for the MDX here. 
and I totally don't blame them. I don't think you need it. It is a little bit uh, deceptive because in the individual drive mode setup, it does have a suspension setting, which makes you think it has adaptive dampers, but I double checked, it does not have adaptive dampers. And so, um, you know, that basically, whenever you do change that suspension mode in the individual thing, that actually is going to change the handling char characteristics of the all wheel drive system and how that reacts and makes that a little bit more sportier with, again, splitting that torque to the back and stuff. So that is what you're changing in that suspension mode if you do go into one of these and you're like, hey, wait, it says I can change the suspension. You can't. And even though these brakes have a little bit more travel to them, they're still very strong brakes. And they're actually 30 millimeters larger than the brakes on the old MDX. You actually do have better braking power than before. Now that probably partially is to compensate for the extra weight you're dealing with here in the new MDX. But still, very stout brakes. I have no complaints about the way those uh, you know help out on a back road either. They do a really good job of you know hauling you down to a stop whenever you want them to. And uh, so yeah, but anyway, I'm gonna pop it out of the uh, sport driving mode, go into the normal mode. I love the little sound effects that it makes whenever you're changing all that stuff as well, but hitting some potholes and stuff, you know, it still is a very uh, smooth ride. Uh, that is one area though where this is definitely not the smoothest in its segment. You can tell that pretty quickly. It's definitely a little bit on the sportier side. Again, going for that performance aspect. So you just have to be cognizant of that. It's not gonna be as floaty as like a Volvo XC90 or something like that. Those, I mean, they kind of glide over things a lot more. Um, this is definitely a little more taut with its suspension setup, uh, but I personally don't mind it. I don't think this is rough by any means, not even remotely close to being, you know, unrefined or anything. It still is very luxurious, feels totally good. Just again, might not be quite as buttery smooth as some of the other stuff. Like for example, the GV80 I reviewed, that did have a softer ride for sure. So you will get that with some of those others. And now we're out on the highway here in the MDX and I have the adaptive cruise control system on with the lane keeping assist function that you can't have here in all the MDXs that actually comes standard. And uh, it does a really good job. So I'm going around some gentle corners here now and it's steering very reliably. And uh, even though this is kind of paved a little bit weird here, it's not throwing off the MDX at all, and uh, it's doing a really good job. And so I've always been really impressed with the Honda and Acura adaptive cruise control system, and their lane keeping assist in particular is one of the best ones out there. It's right up there with Nissan is uh, being one of the top ones. Volvo system is also very good, um, but I think this Acura and Honda system is right up there with those. And it, it always gives me confidence. It always is very uh, militant about staying, you know, centered in its lane it doesn't pogo around it doesn't scare me and you know get too close to the lines or anything like that it's just one of the systems and one of the few systems honestly out there that you can truly relax with and you still have to have your hands on the wheel you still have to be paying attention it still does require you to do a little bit of steering input and if you don't nudge the wheel every once in a while it will encourage you to do so because it wants to make sure that you're still there and you're still you know actively playing a part in the uh, driving of the vehicle here but it really helps cut down on dry driving fatigue because you know you don't have to babysit it quite as much as some of the other adaptive cruise systems from other companies out there you know this you can kind of just relax and enjoy yourself and also while we're out on the highway here you know doing about 60 miles an hour um, pretty quiet and refined in here too it is you know I'd say luxury car levels of refinement you know probably not one of the quietest out there in the segment I do think the Volvo once again probably feels a little quieter than this does um, but I have no complaints. It you know feels really nice, and of course that's in complete silence. We do have this amazing stereo on. It's this ELS Studio 3D stereo. If you have that on at any volume, all of the noise you're hearing will just be completely tuned out, and you'll just be immersed in a surround sound experience. And you're not going to care about any of this stuff as well. But if you're driving in silence, just know that uh, you know it still is pretty refined. Anyway, thanks to Acura, I'm gonna have the new MDX here for the entire week, so I'm gonna drive around all over the place. Then I'll come back and give you guys my final real-world fuel economy, as well as my thoughts on the pricing and this competition, and anything else that I notice here during my week of driving the MDX. All right, so I've been driving the 2022 MDX for a whole week here now, and uh, I've really liked it. I love everything about the MDX, to be perfectly honest. If I were buying a three-row crossover in this segment and I could afford it, I would go for the MDX. That's how much I like it. I mean, just not only is it sporty, and so from an enthusiast standpoint, I love the quick steering. I love the way this thing handles and drives. I love the space in here. I mean, everything about this vehicle just is 
a knockout in my opinion. I love it. Um, but even if you're not looking for, uh, you know, the most sporty thing, I think that this just does a three row crossover better than most of the other competitors in this segment of, uh, you know, this price segment. Because, you know, all the others out there, you know, most of them don't have any kind of power folding second row seat like this does. So it's harder to get into all those third rows. Uh, their third rows are smaller in basically everything else this competes with than this, you know, so you're going to have more space, more cargo space. I love that underfloor bin. So many things about the MDX that just really tick all the boxes, in my opinion. And, but again, even if all you're looking for is a good through row crossover, this is going to do that very, very well, too. One little thing that I did notice uh, during my week of driving here, though, that I wasn't in love with is that sometimes this 10 speed automatic can be caught off guard. And there was a few times where um, it was lagging to give me a downshift and it just felt a little confused. Like it was in too high of a gear. And then I was like, oh, wait, I got to hurry up and downshift for a second. Um, and there's a few times like that where it just felt like the transmission was unprepared. And it actually sometimes made it a little bit less smooth than you would expect out of a luxury crossover. And so there was just a little bit of unrefinement there. I feel like this 10 speed auto could use a little bit more fine-tuning to make sure that it's always in the right gear and feels a little more prepared for what you're asking it to do. Um, so that's the only little thing that I didn't love about the MDX during my week of driving it. So uh, my fuel economy, I didn't do too much more highway driving, um, but it did do very well with all the safety tech and stuff whenever I was out on the highway. But anyway, so the fact that I didn't do much highway driving certainly dragged down my average, but it still is a good bit lower than I was expecting it to be. So um, over, I've been driving almost 170 miles now, and my fuel economy average has been 16.5. Now I did do a fair amount of idling to film this interior, and so you know that certainly did drag down. Before I did do the interior filming and stuff, I was seeing about a 17 and a half mpg average, but that was uh, way earlier in my mileage, so it was before I put all these extra miles on. But I mean, to be doing almost 170 miles, I feel like I gave the car enough chance to uh, get some uh, better fuel economy numbers here. But uh, yeah, it just wasn't great. I think part of it is you know we have this V6, which is thirsty, and you know if you want to get moving, it's got to rev really high in order to do that. Um, and so I think that might you know be part of what hurts it. I don't know you know what it is, but uh, anyway, you know these are rated at 19 mpg in this city. 21 combined and 25 on the highway. So yeah, I mean, I'm nowhere near those estimates. I mean, I'm still a solid, you know, two and a half MPG off. And even if I was getting 17 and a half, I would still be one and a half MPG less. Now I am driving this vehicle in the winter time. And so in the winter time, you usually get worse fuel economy because the vehicle has to warm up longer and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, might be a worst case scenario here for the MDX, but still I was hoping to get somewhere closer to, you know, that 19 MPG. But I mean, this is heavier than the old MDX as well. So, you know, maybe that's part of what's at play here too. But regardless, um, yeah, fuel economy is not great, but granted, if you're looking for a big three row crossover, chances are you don't care about fuel economy a whole lot. And if you do, uh, there are some better fuel economy options out there. Uh, both the Lexus RX and the Volvo XC90 have hybrid options. And in the XC90, it's actually a plug-in hybrid. So you can get really a, a lot better fuel economy in those, but those are a lot more expensive for those hybrid versions. Um, but, you know, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. It would be nice. I know in the past, Acura did have a hybrid, uh, more performance-oriented hybrid version of the MDX for the previous generation. Hopefully they'll add that for this generation as well down the road because I think having a hybrid version would certainly help uh, fill in the torque a little bit since you don't have a ton of torque from this V6 and you again have to go up to the higher PMs and make a lot of your power. Having some electric motors to chip in a little bit of power for that would certainly help I think so hopefully they do that down the road. But in the meantime I still have no complaints with this V6. I think it's great uh, from a performance standpoint. I like it. It sounds good and uh, you know I don't mind they didn't go with a turbo four cylinder like many of the competitors do. But anyway the last thing to mention here is the pricing in the MDX. So that is one area where they priced this very well, in my opinion. So these start uh, just around $48,500 uh, for a starting price for a base version with front-wheel drive and stuff. And then this one, as tested, this A-Spec trim with all-wheel drive, is going to run you about $58,500. So $58,500, it's like $58,625. At that price point, you are still you know, coming out ahead compared with most of the competitors. The only one that really matches this is the Lexus RXL. Um, and if you watch my review on the RXL, RXL, the handling is not even in the same world as the MDX. The hand MDX handles so much better. Maybe the RX is a little more floaty and a little softer, so if that's what you're going for, then maybe you will like the way the RX uh, feels, but 
MDX, in my opinion, uh, is definitely the better driver of the two. Um, and the third row in the RX is also borderline unusable unless you slide up those second row seats a good bit. So if you do actually plan to use this as a three row crossover on a regular basis, I think that this is going to win out over the RX. But if you don't plan to use the third row very often, you just use it every once in a while in a pinch for kids or something, maybe the RX will be a better choice there for the same money. But basically this undercuts everything else out there um, because if you want a comparable Genesis GV80 that's only available with a third row in its absolute top trim, which is 66 grand, and obviously those have a lot more features and stuff, but even if you go for a fully loaded MDX with the advanced trim, which will run you about $62,000, even still you're coming you know, in about four grand less than the GV80 with its third row, which is gonna be a smaller third row than what you get here in the MDX as well, since the GV80 is a tiny bit smaller than this vehicle. And so, you know, that's a compromise you have there. And then other stuff that's out there, you know, like a Cadillac XT6, you're gonna be spending, you know, a few thousand dollars over this as well, at least for MSRP prices. Cadillac loves doing huge discounts and stuff. But as far as MSRPs go, you know, you're going to be, again, spending a little bit more for the Cadillac. The Volvo XC90, a comparable version of that, it's gonna be about $65,000. So you'll be several thousand over even, you know, a top advanced trim of this. And that's just for a comparable one to an A-spec. If you wanna have all the features you get in an advanced trim, you're going to be looking at several thousand more. So I would say you're safely looking at about a five grand difference, probably at least. And then once you go up to the German competitors, if you're even considering those, Mercedes GLS, BMW X7, those are both going to be about 20 grand more expensive than the MDX. So not really comparable because if you have an extra 20 grand here and there to blow on something, then you know clearly it's going to be those vehicles are nicer, but uh, you know you're going to be paying a lot more for those, especially if you want them comparably equipped. So I really think that the MDX has a really solid value proposition here with where it's positioned and what it offers. I think it's really great. You know, there's a couple little things that I'm annoyed by. I, I wish that, you know, you could at least get a heated steering wheel as an option um, in this A-Spectrum because you can get one as a dealer installed add-on where they actually swap your steering wheel for $500. If that sounds okay to you, then you can get a heated steering wheel in any version of an MDX. Um, but you know, all the other competitors offer that as just an add-on option for a few hundred bucks and that's it. So I really wish they didn't force you to go into a top advanced trim for that. Um, there's a few other features that are, I think should be included with a $58,000 vehicle, um, such as there's no 360 camera unless you go up to the advanced trim. And they even went cheap on the ambient lighting here. Where in, in the uh, top trim, you have ambient lighting here around the climate controls. You don't get that here in this A-spec. You only have it on the doors. Stuff like the Genesis GV80 doesn't nickel and dime you like that. The GV80, even uh, the lower trims and the base versions have tons of ambient lighting. It, you know, it looks like a nightclub inside the GV80 compared to this. This is a lot more subtle. You know, like how much does an LED strip cost? Like why reserve that for just the advanced trim when it's gonna cost Acura another 10 bucks to put it in or whatever? Just, it seems like they're deliberately forcing people into the advanced trim to get the features that people are expecting to get in a luxury crossover. But again, I can't be too upset about the price because even with an advanced trim, you're still coming in several thousand dollars less than the competitors. Um, you know, but just be forewarned, even in the A-spec here, you do get some nice stuff, like you get the high-end stereo, the heated and ventilated seats, and a lot of other nice features. Just, you know, to be driving around a $58,000 vehicle with no heated steering wheel is just kind of crazy to me, considering even like a $35,000 Kia K5 that I also have as a press vehicle this week has a heated steering wheel. This isn't some extravagant luxury feature, and it should just be at least standard in the A-spec, if not tech packages of the MDX. So anyway, I digress, but uh, you know, I still think the value proposition here is very strong in the MDX. The only other little thing to consider is depreciation here in the MDX. So it is a little bit higher than some of the others out there. So according to CarEdge.com, depreciation is going to be about 59% over the course of about five years. And that is a little bit on the high side, but that's still not as bad as the Germans, which are usually in the uh, 60s as far as their depreciation. Um, but certainly that's another area where if you're open to the Lexus RXL, that is going to be the champ hands down as far as depreciation goes, because those only will depreciate about 42% over those same uh, five years. So, I mean, that is going to clearly be the winner there. And potentially the Cadillac XT6 could undercut this a little bit as far as depreciation goes as well because uh, historically the XT6 is pretty new but the XT5 had a little bit of a lower depreciation percentage than the MDX here. So that is potentially another one you might save a little bit on um, but whenever you look like a Volvo XC90 that's also 65% depreciation over five years. So uh, the MDX isn't the best but it's also definitely not the worst as far as depreciation goes. 
So, you know, you actually will probably lose a little bit less money here in the MDX than the European competitors, at least. And so that's another thing to consider here. And another reason why the MDX, you know, might be a little bit better than some of those others as far as, you know, if you're actually going to own a vehicle and not just lease it for a few years, but you're actually going to buy it and keep it, the MDX will hold its value a little bit better. I mean, luxury brands still drop a lot. But yeah, overall, like I said, I love the MDX. It would be my pick if I needed a three-row crossover and could afford it. And uh, yeah, this is actually one of the vehicles I'm going to kind of miss a little bit. I don't think I've ever said that I'm going to miss a three-row crossover uh, ever. And so, I mean, this is going to be one that I really enjoy driving it that much. I really am a big fan of this new MDX. They did a great job with it. Uh, but anyway, let me know your thoughts on the new MDX here in the comments below. Huge thanks to Acura for providing me here with the new MDX to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.